All right, we are going to be doing another live product research session for Amazon FBA. Now, if you're not seeing my other video, go and check it out. It's got over 20,000 views. Very proud of that, actually. I'm really glad that, you know, people enjoyed it. So what we're going to be doing today is a live product research session using a tool called Helium 10. Now, if you don't have Helium 10, if you never used it before and you want to give it a try, they've actually got a 40% discount on right now, which is pretty nuts. It's a huge saving. If you want to take advantage of that, go and check out the link in the description. If you don't know me, my name is Alex and I am a seven figure Amazon seller, myself and my business partner, Tom. We've got a seven figure brand and our other business partner, Jansen, he's also got a seven figure brand. And honestly, I love doing product research and I love doing it with Helium 10. And because the last video I did was such a success, I'm going to do another probably 35 to 40 minutes of product research. So this is basically where you can look over my shoulder and you can see exactly how we do it because I like to think that we do product research in a bit of a different way than most of the stuff that you see on YouTube, which in my opinion is pretty crap. All right, so I'm gonna to come to the tools section of Helium 10 and at the top, I'm gonna to go to Blackbox. This is where I start all of my product research. And the reason for that is I just think it's the best way to filter for products on a very sort of high level and then you can narrow everything down. So Helium 10 has got these um, filters that you can use. I'm just going to pick a few different categories. I'm not too hung up on, on different uh, categories. I do have some, you know, some favorites personally. I love, you know, anything to do with pets. We've got a pet brand. Um, anything to do with, you know, patio lawn and garden is usually good as long as it's, you know, not too seasonal. Um, but I'm gonna just going to select a few of these. I'm not going to obsess over that too much. It's these other filters that I'm really interested in. And these are the, these are the bits where I think other gurus get this completely wrong. Now, usually what they're going to tell you is they will say, look for something between $20 and $35. And then what they'll say is, look for something that's got a maximum of 300 reviews, because they love to teach you this idea that low reviews means low competition. And I'm here to tell you that it's absolute nonsense. And if you see a guru saying that, unsubscribe, show them my channel, get them to subscribe to mine, watch my videos and then learn and go back and do it again. No, I'm just kidding, don't do that. But my point here is you shouldn't be filtering by numbers of reviews. It's just not an indication of competition. So I'm not gonna spend too long on this, but it can be a trap because if you go into a niche where the average review counts are very low, what you're gonna find is by the time you get your product to market, that niche looks completely different. And I've seen this happen so many times with so many trending products it's usually a trending product because what happens is a product will blow up on TikTok or another social media. And all of these people that are using Helium 10 or other tools like Jungle Scout, for example, everybody's looking for stuff that's got low review counts. Everybody sees these niches with high revenue and low review counts and they get excited. Everybody launches the same product. And then within six months, the price has tanked. And that niche is just an absolute disaster. So the way that I teach Amazon FBA product research is ignore the review count. We've literally just had a student within Honest FBA that has launched a product. He's doing over $7,000 a day in sales. And the top seller in his niche has got 33,000 reviews. Now, if any other guru looked at that, they would say, there's no way you should go into that niche. But that's why they're talking nonsense and they don't know what they're doing. So you can do it. So ignore the review counts. What you really want to be looking at more than that is the review rating. The review rating is going to help you find niches where the quality of the products is poor. So if you can bring in a better quality product and you're going to stand out, if you can get better reviews, people are going to pick your product over the competition. So I like to put the review rating at 4.5. You can put it even lower than this. Like if you want to find stuff that's got a four star review, but that's doing loads of sales, then obviously that's going to be great because if you can improve on that and get it up to, you know, 4.6 or 4.7, you're going to stand a big chance. The other thing is the price. As I said, most gurus will tell you to do 20 to $35. I think that's nonsense. I think you should be starting it at $35. I'm not saying that you can't do it lower than this, but the lower you get, the harder it is generally with PPC and your Amazon fees. So I like to go $35 and then I don't really put a cap at the top end. You can have some great success with, with high ticket products. We've got a student within an Honest FBA again. His name is Andrew. He launched a $330 product and absolutely killed it. So I don't put any cap here. Sometimes, you know, I will. I'll put $900 maybe or $2,000, whatever. Um, but you can really sort of play around with that and, you know, 
whatever you want on, on the higher end. The monthly revenue, this is another one where I see so many mistakes and so many people teaching bad strategies is the monthly revenue depends on your budget. If you've only got $6,000, you can go into a niche or you should be going into a niche that's way smaller than the niche that I'm going to go into. If I've got $50,000 and you've got $6,000, we shouldn't be looking at selling the same products. And this is one thing that nobody talks about is the products that you're looking to sell and the niches that you're looking at going into, they're dictated by how much money you have. If I've got $50,000, I can afford to launch into a much bigger niche. So this is really gonna depend on you. If you've got $10,000, I would recommend not really going into a niche where the top sellers are doing more than thirty dollars to $40,000. Again, I'm not saying it's impossible, but in my experience, it makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna do the minimum. I'm gonna do $10,000 minimum monthly revenue. I'm gonna put $45,000 and we're gonna kind of see what comes up. For the rest of these, I'm not too concerned about the shipping size. Again, I, I like to um, I like to think a little bit outside of the box. You know, when you get into large oversize, it does start to get a little bit difficult when it comes down to shipping and stuff. But I would encourage you to look at oversize things as well as, you know, normal uh, or small standard size stuff because there is some good opportunity there. The same with weight. I don't really put a cap on it at the top end. Um, I'm, I'm more concerned, you know, about the, the ratio of your Amazon FBA fees to your price but I will go into some of that a bit later on. Variation count is one that I do look at. I don't really want to be launching stuff that's got tons and tons of like size variations, for example, again, unless you've got a huge budget. So I'm going to put the maximum variation count at three. Number of images. This is a good one. If you want to find the listings that are doing really well, you, maybe you want to find a listing that's doing $15,000 a month. Maybe it's only got three images and that means it's a pretty poor listing. That means that you could you know, have a chance at beating it in terms of the listing quality. This is actually one of the ways that we found our very first product. It's not a very scalable method because you can only launch products that have got low competition because of the, you know, they've only got two or three images. Um, but it's a great little hack if you're just starting out and you, you know, you want to get a, a simple product to market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit search. Now, when this is all loaded up, right, this is not where I'm saying you're going to find this winning product, but this is the starting point. You're going to go through these products, anything that like stands out to you, you're going to click on it. And then you're going to go to Amazon and you're going to end up down a rabbit hole when you start doing more analysis on Amazon. So some of the products that I'm not particularly into are products like this sort of, um, Nespresso machine straight away, because it's a branded product. You're going to have, you're going to have a lot of problems. But stuff like this, like these mini chainsaws, I was going to say that I'm not interested in them, but now I've loaded it up. I'm actually interested in taking a look. So the way that I teach Amazon FBA product research, right, is there is a set of fundamentals and there's a process that you need to go through every time you're doing product research. So the first one is once I find a product that looks interesting, like this one, it looks quite interesting to me. I want to see the overall niche because we're not just assessing this individual, this single product. If we're looking to sell mini chainsaws, then we want to see what the overall market for mini chainsaws is. And the reason we're doing that is number one, we want to see how big it is and does it fit our budget? And I'll show you how to do that quite quickly in a minute. The second one is we want to see what's the competition like, because we're not just competing against this one seller, right? So if we take a look at how much revenue this one seller is doing, it did show us on the previous screen, but I forgot what it was. All right, so this seller is doing 160 units a month and they're doing nearly $11,000, right? And if, if we click on this button here where it says sales graph, not this button, this, this little icon, you can see over time, if you change this to all time, you can see the sales of this product. Now, I think this product is pretty new. looks like it only launched in June and you can see it wasn't doing too well. And then all of a sudden it's, it started to do a little bit better. That could be the Q4 rush coming in. Um, so what I want to do when I'm looking at this is I want to find what I think is the main, the main keyword, because that main keyword is going to help me find the overall niche. So I think that it's a mini chainsaw, right? So what I'm going to do is, cause I can see it there. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hazard a guess. Um, and I'm going to go to all departments and I want to search mini chainsaw. So this is going to give me a better idea of what the overall niche is, right? So the first thing that I want to do is I want to see how big is it? And the reason that I'm doing that again is, like I said, what you launch is dictated by your budget. So what I'm going to do is once this loads up, I'm going to look at a couple of things. 
The first one is the search volume. So I want to see how many people are searching for this product every single month. There's a few reasons why I want to do that. The first one is I want to make sure that it's not super seasonal. I want to make sure that people buy mini chainsaws all year round. So it looks like it is pretty consistent. Um, I'm not sure why there's been a huge spike here. Sometimes this can be a bit of a bug with Amazon's search system and stuff like that. But it looks like it's pretty consistent, right? It looks like it's a, it's a product that's quite consistent over time, which is good. So that's the first thing. The second thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter these results and I'm going to hide these sponsored results because I don't want to see any adverts. I want to see who ranks for this keyword organically in these top spots, right? So the first thing that I see with this niche is that this seller is selling a $90 mini chainsaw and they're doing $2 million in revenue. So straight away, there really is no way anybody watching this video should try and launch one of these products because this is a niche that's just way, way, way too big. It's so big that you would need so much stock to be able to compete here that it doesn't make sense. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the UK market and I'm going to look at the size of it there. Because if you're from the US, there's no reason you can't sell in the UK. And if you're from the UK, there's no reason you can't sell in the US. We're from the UK. We live in Spain, but we sell in the US. It doesn't matter where you're from. It, it matters where your company's based and, and if you've got the permission to, to sell stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the UK because what you'll find normally or almost all the time is that the market in the UK is usually roughly about a tenth of the size, sometimes smaller. So what I want to see, I think you can see that same product there that I saw in the, in the, uh, in the US. So I'm going to check the size of this market now in the UK. All right, so you can see, right, that it's still a huge, huge niche. So if I filter again and I hide these, these sponsored results, you can see that it's still a huge, a huge niche. It's absolutely massive. Um, but at the top end, you've got this, I think it was the same brand, right? This is probably a well-known brand, but you've got these guys here doing, you know, 250K, then you've got the rest of them. So just to kind of give you guys an idea of how much money I would want to properly launch into this niche is I would probably be wanting to have at least 40 or 50,000 pounds or dollars to launch into this niche. The way that we do that as a rough rule of thumb is we look at the top 10 sellers in the niche. We take the median number of their revenue, and that's roughly the amount of budget that we would need. Um, now, I can do another video on how to do that sort of stuff a little bit in, in, more in depth. Um, but what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the keywords for this one. So you might be thinking, well, you know, I'm based in the US. <laughs> like I said, why is this guy looking at a UK market? Uh, but it's super easy to sell into the uh, UK market from the US and vice versa. The one thing I actually really like about this listing is, is I, I mean, it just looks great. Like it's, it's, uh, it's very well put together. So I'm not surprised that it's doing so well. The one thing that I like about this type of product as well is the ratio of the Amazon fee to the sales price. So this is one thing that you really want to keep an eye on, right? Because what you don't want on a 90 pound product or a $90 product, you don't want to see an FBA fee which is like 40 or 50 pounds because it's such a huge chunk of your overall revenue. It's going to make it very difficult for you to sell that product. So I really like the fact that this is, you know, it's, it, it's, it's quite a small percentage of the overall um, sales price. This FBA fee is 1855 and the sales price is 90. So that's quite healthy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to actually go back to the U S market because I like to do most of my research in the U S um, but I'm going to imagine that I would actually, let's imagine that we've got the budget to launch this product and I'm going to go through the things that I would look at. So the first thing is I would come down to this top seller. So it looks like this guy is the top seller here. It's doing crazy amounts of numbers, 31,000. I would assume that this is a well-known brand, but what I'm going to do to see that is I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to go on keywords. So this is using um, Helium 10 Cerebral tool, which is absolutely amazing. Um, it's basically going to pull up all of the keywords that this product ranks for. And that's going to be able to help us see the keywords that are driving sales. So it's going to help us see what are people searching when, when they come across this product and they go on and buy it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to this organic rank box. I'm going to put organic rank one to 25. That's going to show me all of the keywords down here that this product ranks for organically between positions one and 25. So that means they, they're not paying for advertising. That means they're just placed there organically by Amazon's algorithm because Amazon really likes that product when it comes to that keyword. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter these uh, by search volume. So I'm going to hit that one there. And what it's going to do, it's going to put that top one. So we can see that that, that main keyword before was mini chainsaw. Um, we can see that this is ranking organically third for that keyword. So it's doing very well for that. So then we've got a couple of us. We've got, we got mini chainsaw, cordless, electric chainsaw, tech gifts for men. That's probably going to be a big one coming up to, uh, coming up to Christmas. So you, Actually, this product, you know, is is not actually getting a ton of branded search. I mean, this looks like branded search here. I think this is the brand name. Is it Saka or Saker? So, yeah, so you can see that this, you know, it looks like this is like a, a home improvement type of um, product. If I was looking to sell these chainsaws, the way that I would do it is I'm looking at all of these top selling chainsaws. And I'm thinking, how can I stand out against all of these chainsaws? There's two ways that you can do that. And you need to do this for every single product and niche that you look at. You need to think, how can I stand out visually? And then how can I stand out functionally? So when people are shopping for mini chainsaws, they click on things that catch their eye. So sometimes it might be the reviews. It might be, well, this is, you know, got 1200 reviews. It might be the price. It might be the coupon. But a lot of the time, it's, you know, it's stuff like this, where this is a really nice image that really pops out. But if you were to bring a new product to this market, you need to think about how you're going to stand out. So if you look at this, they, they all follow a very similar color scheme. So you need, they, they all have very similar packaging. Um, you've got to be thinking, how can I bring something in that really stands out in this niche? So it doesn't matter what niche you're looking at. You need to go through the same thought process. So the first thing is how big is the niche? Does it fit my budget? The second thing is how am I going to stand out? I am going to go now into the reviews because what I want to look at is, is there any room for me to actually improve the product, right? It looks like most of these top selling products have got 4.5 or, you know, around that in terms of the reviewing 4.6, 4.8, um, 4.7. I mean, this is a very competitive niche. When you've, when you've got products that are doing, you know, crazy, crazy volume and they've got great reviews, it's very difficult to compete. But what I would do if I was to continue looking at this, because I'm going to go back to Helium 10 in a minute, just so we can, you know, so we don't get stuck looking at chainsaws all day, is I'm going to come down to the reviews and I'm going to read the negative reviews. I'm going to read the positive reviews. I'm going to build up a picture of what people love about this product and what they hate about it. Then that's going to allow me to create my own version of this that's going to stand out visually and it's also going to stand out functionally. All right, so I'm going to come back. I'm going to go through again and, and take a look at some other stuff. I want to I want to make sure that I go through the fundamentals with you guys and you know I I explain my thought process, but I don't want to spend too long on one thing because I, I understand it can get you know it can get a little bit um, tedious. All right, this is another one that I think I might have seen before. Um, so this is a bamboo bread slicer. First of all, I'm not sure why the buy box has disappeared, but I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take this keyword bamboo bread slicer and I'm going to put it in at the top. And that is going to allow me to see the overall niche. Then we're looking at the overall niche. The first thing that I noticed with this is that they all look the same. So I love when I see a niche where everything looks the same. You want to know why? I'm going to tell you why. I love niches where everything looks the same because it means that if you come in with something that looks different, you're going to stand out. So if you walk down the road and you've got a massive pimple on your nose, you're going to stand out. People are going to look at you. And it's the same thing with Amazon. You always want to think in how you can stand out. So let's have a look at these top ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the revenue um, calculator. I'm going to run x-ray and I want to see, you know, is is this niche nice for my, you know, my budget size? The way that I do that is I look at the top 10 sellers of the main keyword usually, uh, and I, and I kind of get, um, you know, a sense of it there. Another thing is I'm doing this on the 7th of December. So there's going to be a lot of people shopping for Christmas, which is one thing that we've got to consider. Um, 
But as you can see here, you know, it peaks, it peaks in December where people are obviously shopping for these types of products. Um, for the rest of the year, it's not amazing. This one here, I'm going to look at the, this top one. So what's weird about products like this sometimes is that you have a huge disparity between the top seller at $340,000 a month and then the second best seller, which is only doing, you know, 45000 a month. So I'm going to see this one. I'm going to have a look at what keywords it ranks for. And then I'm going to dive into the reviews. I'm going to see if there's ways I could improve it, if I can make it look different. Um, and then if I've gone through all of those things and I think there's ways that I can improve the product, there's ways that I can make it stand out, then I'm going to go ahead and go to a site like Alibaba and I'm going to figure out the price roughly and I'm going to see if the price makes sense. Um, and, and this is basically the process of, of how you find products. And once you learn this process, you're never going to run out of ideas. I've got so many ideas now. They're coming out of my ears. Just kidding. I've got so many ideas now that we don't have enough money to launch them all. That's the problem when you get to um, uh, the size of a business like ours is it's not, it's not the ideas that you need for launching products. It's the capital to do so. So this product's been around for ages. It's been around since 2018. Um, a good thing about this is the price looks pretty stable. So this green line here, this is the price. So what I'm not seeing is over time, this, this price just going down and down and down and down. Because that's one thing that you want to look for when you're looking at niches is you don't want to be entering a market where the price is just going down because there's new people coming in all the time. And when new people come in and they don't make sales, they reduce the price because they want to make sales. And that drags the whole price down in that niche. So you want to be keeping an eye on that. So I'm going to go to the keywords again. I'm going to, while that keyword box loads up, because sometimes it can take a while, you can see these guys have done a bit of a different aesthetic. They've done like a, like a, you know, like a, a, a red bamboo. Perhaps you could use a different type of wood. Maybe you could stain the wood a different color. You've also got to think really what people care. I mean, this is a very functional product, right? But it's probably a product that, do they, do they, they keep it in the kitchen? Is it on show? Um, you want something that's sturdy and doesn't break. But what I want to look at is the actual reviews. So I'm, it's 4.3, which means it's not bad. But it, it, there's probably some common complaints in here that people complain about. So unless you want bamboo pieces of wood in your stomach, I wouldn't buy. Inefficient to use. It's difficult to hold. The bread was higher than the tops of the guides. I love splinters. Splinters, overpriced. Knife is too small. High hopes. But so... Win silly product of the year. Okay, so the, the, again, it's not about this one individual product. It's about learning the process of product research so that you can find 20, 30 products every single time you do product research. So it looks like I've seen a few times bamboo splintering. Now, what I would be thinking then, if I come back to this, is I would be thinking, how can I create a version of this where I fix this problem with splintering. Because what you can do is in, in your listing images, you can address that and you can say us versus the rest. And we've fixed this problem of the bamboo splintering. I don't know how you would do that. We would have to look into that. Um, but that's roughly kind of like how we would do it. If I was interested in this product, just to come back to um, the main page, I would then be starting to figure out, you know, how much money roughly am I going to need? Um, and it can be a bit difficult when you're doing this at Christmas, like I said, because, you know, the sales of this type of stuff at Christmas go nuts. But it looks like this top seller absolutely kills it all year round. Like even in February, they're doing over 100 units a day. So what I want to do, I want to see what what the um, what this this top seller, this one here, I want to see what keywords this one ranks for. Um, and I did open it in the other page and I forgot. So I'm going to do this again, positions one to 25. It's probably likely that this top seller ranks for a big keyword that none of the other sellers um, rank for. So I'm going to, I'm going to search it again. I'm going to filter this, sorry, again by search volume. So let's see. So you can see here, this one ranks for bread knife in position 24 probably not getting that many sales from that keyword. So this is the organic rank. This is where they rank organically. Um, bread slicer, bread slicer for homemade bread, bread making tools. I would bet if I had to bet that that this, this product ranks ninth for that and these other products don't, and that's where it's probably getting some sales. Bread knife for homemade bread, it ranks fifth for that. So if we have a look at this, 
there we go. Look, so th- th- this is why sometimes you get products that do do way better than everybody else. It's because they rank for these keywords that probably are really difficult to rank for. Um, like this is a sponsored result. This one is also, and it's not a sponsored result, but there's not many on like, th- th- this is a different keyword, right? Bread knife for homemade bread. Um, it just seems that they somehow rank for this really well. Maybe people see this and then they go on and buy this. Um, but yeah, that's why this product is doing so much better than um, than the rest of them. If we just come back to this um, main screen, it's doing so much better because it, it's ranking for a bunch of keywords that these other ones don't. So if I was looking at this niche, I would probably count that product out. I would, I would, um, I would assume that that's an outlier product that, you know, I would base all of my estimations on these products here. So looking at these numbers roughly, you could probably launch this product with, you know, maybe 15, maybe $20,000. Um, if you discount this, you know, that, you know, this, this top one, um, you could probably come into this niche with, you know, maybe a little bit less. It depends how aggressive you want to go, but I'm going to come back because I want to try and think of some ways that we could stand out here. Right. Cause as I said, you want to stand out aesthetically. Um, and then you also, you know, want to stand out because what you need to do whenever you're doing your product research is put yourself in the customer's shoes. Always think about the last time that you bought something from Amazon. What were you thinking about? Because you've got to remember to think like the customer all the time. So if I'm a customer, I'm probably just going to be drawn into this one because it's got the best seller badge. Um, it's got this lovely bow. They've done a great job with the hero image. They've they've included the main image. Uh, it, sorry, they've included the packaging, which really stands out. Like, look at these three. They're just so boring. Like, why would you click on one of these? Like, they just don't entice me at all to click on them. So I would be looking at some of these. I want to, what I'd want to do is I don't want to look at that top seller. I want to look at the second best seller. And then I'm going to try and come up with some ways that we could creatively stand out. So the first thing that I think I would do is I would be thinking about making a, a brand that that's centered around baking and around bread. And I would want to create a super, super quirky brand that really stands out that we can promote on social media, that we can, you know, do some tongue in cheek sort of jokes. We can do some great visual branding. That's really going to help us stand out. The first thing I noticed about this is the, is, is the FBA fee is 10 bucks <clears throat> and the sales price is $23, which is crazy. That means half of the sales before you do anything has gone has gone on the FBA fee because this product is not really going to be that small to ship either, unless it flat packs. This is probably going to pack pretty small. I actually thought it would be quite big, but it's not because you flat pack it, right? Like a bit of Ikea uh, furniture, whatever. So this is actually doing pretty well, this, this listing. And as you can see, the listing's not that great. You know what I mean? Like it's very simple. It's a Photoshop thing. I think you could do a better job of the branding to try and stand out. You could definitely do a better job with the hero image. You could get the, the packaging in there. There's You could get a big sharp, sharp knife in there that really stands out. There's definitely a ton of stuff that you could do. So I'm going to come down to the reviews again, and I'm going to see what are people complaining about all the time that's making this have a 4.1. So it's poorly designed, fatal engineering flaws. You need four hands to operate the slicer, two to hold. Okay, so that's something that perhaps you could speak to a manufacturer about. You could see if there's any ways you could improve on that um let's have a look big disappointment splinters again this splinter thing seems massive so the next thing that i'd be doing with this is i would be ordering one of these i would order the top seller and then i would order an, uh, the maybe the second or the third best seller <clears throat> and i would use it and i would see what's wrong with it and i would see what i can improve the good thing about a product like this is it's made from wood it's not really difficult to customize wooden products. It's not super expensive. It's not super time consuming. So if I'm a customer, I am going to check out these reviews, right? And I'm going to see all of these reviews and I'm going to be like, oh God, what am I going to, you know, so it, okay, it looks okay, but am I going to get bamboo splinters? So that's the main thing that I would be looking at. I would be really thinking, how can I make an exciting brand that's really going to stand out? But then how can I fix this issue with these wooden splinters? Because I, I don't want to be, I don't want the customers to be getting that. But this just seems like something that is a common thing that surely we should be able to fix. Bamboo slivers, don't buy this product. You're on your own. 
junk, 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 hard to use, don't buy, wood chips. So it seems like all of these cheaper, all of these cheaper <clears throat> bamboo um, bread slices have got this problem with the splintering of the wood. So if you can somehow fix that problem, and maybe it's inherent to it being bamboo, maybe bamboo is just too too damn sort of um, soft. Maybe you've got to use another type of wood and some, somehow you can still kind of rank for this. But, <clears throat> but you've really got to think about how you can fix that. I really like this hero image. It stands out a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at one more product and then I am going to wrap it up. Let's have a look. Grill Force Prime Cat Litter Box. Um, I've seen these a few times. I don't want to look at that again. All right, let's have a look at this one. This is, what is this? This is an ugly ass product. My word, what is that? That is some sort of, it's a folding sofa couch bed. Um, it's got 2.7 stars. It looks horrendous. So I guess it's this thing that you turn into a chair. Um, so, all right, I want to, again, we want to see the main niche. This looks, okay, so there's tons of these that look kind of like this. Um, these are interesting though. And this is what happens when you do product research, right? Is you find one thing then you find another thing and you find another and another and another. Um, and you know, you find stuff like this, like, so I would, I would open this one up and then I would go and look at that again afterwards, but I'm going to find the main keyword again. So folding sofa couch, folding sofa couch. Another great thing with helium 10 is when you type stuff at the top like this, you get these, you get these amazing, um, you you get these amazing sort of suggestions here. So I'm actually going to look at folding sofa bed and just see if that's the same. All right, this looks the same. So straight away, what I like about this, I like the price point. It's over a hundred dollars. Don't be looking at products that are $25. Everyone's doing that. Second thing I like is it all looks boring. It looks so boring and so dull. So I like that. Um, the third thing is that's not so amazing is it's going to be pretty big, um, which as you can see, a lot of these, it says fulfilled by merch. But one of the things is if this is memory foam, memory foam can be vacuum packed and it can be made very small. And that's a great way that you can get an edge against your competition. If you can make the packaging really, really small. Um, but even look, as you're going through, you see all these other products that you can be looking at and you can be analyzing. So again, the first thing that I'm thinking is everything on here just looks really, really dull. So I would be thinking, how could I, how could I stand out visually if I was to launch one of these? Um, this is the overall pick. It doesn't look like it's doing too well though, in terms of sales. So what I am going to look at is this is, I mean, this is a folding mattress. It's a little bit of a different product, but I'm going to have a look again. This is like a, a folding sleeper chair. All of these just look low quality though, don't they? You know, they, they're not looking too great. I mean, I don't know ever again, this is just for Christmas, but this says this is doing 700 sales a month, which if it is, that's pretty crazy because it's priced at like $150. So yeah, it's doing pretty damn good. Um, I don't know if this is just taking off again because of Christmas or not, but no. So this is a product that's doing consistently very well. It's doing like 24 23 um, sales a day, but obviously because it's $200, that's pretty good. So like, yeah, I mean, again, the FBA fee relative to the size, the, 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 the price of the product. I mean, look at this, it's, it's got a $55 um, fee, but it's $200. So that's great. I mean, this for me is quite a good opportunity. Like I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this is so boring and it just looks cheap. It looks crap. It doesn't look good and none of them stand out. You might, I'm not saying you can do something crazy here visually because pe maybe people want something neutral, um, but just look, look at the brand name for God's sake. It just looks crap. Like if you come in and you make a beautiful looking brand and you, you have a good price and you've got a good listing, you're going to stand out against these people. Um, so folding sleeper chair, what I want to do is I want to see what it ranks for again, because I'm interested to find this main keyword. All right, so now it's loaded up. I am going to go 1 to 25 again, um, and I'm going to apply filters. Again, same, you know, same process every time. Always the same. 
Um, futon couch. And then we start seeing, that's why we're getting so many sales for this, right? Um, so that's why we're getting so many sales because you've got keywords like this that are absolutely huge. So it looks like, you know, futon couch, sofa chair, futon bed. There's a bunch of different things. So you need to make sure that you're looking. I mean, this is different though. This is a, a very different product. Um, organic. Oh, so you can see, right? It's ranking 22, 24. So it's not super relevant for these. The most relevant keyword looks like this one. It's ranking second for futon bed. So that's an interesting one. It's interesting that that ranks so well for that. Um, I can't actually see it in here, but but basically there's tons of stuff in here. Um, there's so much opportunity. Small couch for bedroom. That's a very specific keyword, mini couch. Um, so there's a, there's a lot to go at here. All right, so I, look, I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope um, you learned from my thought process of you know speaking out loud, uh, going through the steps. Remember that you need to be looking at the demand. You need to make sure it fits your budget. Um, you need to be, you know, looking, thinking, how can I stand out in this niche? All that good stuff. So yeah, I hope you like it. If you did, drop me a comment below. Let me know if you want any other videos, um, what we can do for you for new content, all that good stuff. And in the meantime, go and watch this damn video right here. I'll see you soon.